Hi, how are you? And uh, this is our weekly video about uh, grammar and today we're talking about sequence of tenses. And before we start, I would like us to remember the very first day when we met for grammar last September. And uh, let's try to remember the classification of sentences. If you remember, sentences can be simple and composite. Simple sentences can be one member, two member and elliptical. And composite sentences can be a compound when two clauses are equal and complex when one clause dominates the others. And later we learned that uh, this domineering clause is called the principal clause and uh, other clauses which are dominated by this principal clause are called subordinate clauses. So this is the little piece of theory from the first semester that we're going to need today. So, please remember these two terms, the principal clause, главное предложение в составе сложно подчиненного, and uh, the subordinate clause, второстепенное предложение в составе сложно подчиненного. So, the whole idea of sequence of tenses is actually very simple. This is that if you choose something in the principal clause, there is a logical connection between this verb in the principal clause and all the other verbs in a complex sentence. Unlike in Russian, because a uh, sequence of tenses is only difficult if you try to translate from English into Russian, keeping the Russian tenses. I will give you one Russian sentence so that you see the idea. For example, we have a character and his name is John, and John is in a terrible situation when he has a company and the company is going to miss the train. So, in the Russian sentence, we're going to have the combination of three different tenses. We say, John думал, past tense, что все понимают, present tense, что они опоздают на поезд, the future tense. And as a result, for an English native speaker, this combination is terribly strange, because the whole situation with John and the train and the friends happened several months ago, if not years, and the whole situation is deep in the past. So then, if you don't translate this sentence from Russian, but you look back into that situation, you say that John thought that everybody understood at that past moment, it was at the same time, that they would miss the train, because it was going to happen in the future, but it's not our real future, but it's their future, John's and his, John and his friend's future. So, the idea of sequence of tenses is that we look at the complex sentence as a system and we decide if other actions in subordinate clauses precede, follow, or happen at the same time with the action in the principal clause. Now I'm going to do it again, but with the presentation, so that you have the chance to have something visual in front of your eyes. And uh, But please remember this whole idea that sequence of tenses is only difficult if you try to translate tenses from Russian. If you don't, if you try to make a logical picture right away, there is absolutely nothing difficult. You just logically decide what happened earlier, later, or at the same time. So the general idea of sequence of tenses is that in every complex sentence we find some first point, some first action, the countdown point. It's usually the action in the principal clause, because we start looking at the situation from the principal clause. And uh, then uh, we take it as our point of beginning, the countdown point, точка отчета, and then we'll calculate all the other actions compared to this action, to this first important action. Uh, we are going to have uh, three types of situations, three types of cases. What we have in the principal clause already. First of all, we can have a present tense, and it will usually imply it's a present time context. Then we can have some past tense or some future in the past tense, which is very characteristic of some future story. Or we can start our principal clause with a future tense, which is obviously a very rare situation because people very rarely speak in the future. This is the rarest tense in English, in Russian, in any European language. The present and the past are much more common than the future. So we first need to decide what kind of action we have in the principal clause, see what tense we have, and after that we're going to have 
free variance, our range of choices. So the free choices will be that um, if you try to decide what other tense you're going to use in the same sentence, you're going to decide if this is simultaneous, so it happens at the same time. For example, I know what you see right now. Or if uh, this action in the subordinate clause is preceding, so it happened earlier, for example, I know what you have seen, or I know what you saw yesterday. Or uh, the third variant is that uh, I know right at the moment, but the action, which uh, is in the subordinate clause, is next. It happens later, so it follows the action in the principal clause. For example, I know what you will see in the morning, for example. So this is the general idea that every time you choose the tense in the subordinate clause, you look back at the tense in the principal clause and decide if it's earlier, later, or at the same time. And now we are going to have a look at uh, the free situation. So you have the present, past or future, in the past and the future. And uh, let's look at each of them separately. So this is going to be our first uh, table and we're going to have three tables. By the way, I would like you to copy that those tables. So in your digest you should have tables like that, but it will be much better if the examples there are not my examples, but your own examples. And this is going to be part of your homework that you make your own examples here and that's a lot of them, right? So we have less exercises today just because you are going to have such a large table to complete. So you see in the table you have uh, three possible situations. The actions are simultaneous. Sorry, there is a car outside the window. Uh, simultaneous right at the moment. I'm recording this video and there is a car <laughs> behind the window. Then there is a preceding action, uh, so the action which happened earlier. And there is a following action, so the action that will happen or would happen later. And if our whole situation is that in the principal clause we have a past tense or future in the past tense, and this is the second column, right? So in the first part of the sentence we are going to have one of those past tenses. And if you can see, in each situation they are the same, right? Um, we have the past indefinite, the past continuous, the past perfect, the past perfect continuous, and one of the future in the past tenses in the principal clause. Then, if we have that in the principal clause and the actions are simultaneous, then we are going to choose the past indefinite or the past continuous in the subordinate clause. For example, we knew that the story was true. The story was true at the same time we knew it. Or I saw that Monica was smiling. At that very moment when I had a look at Monica, she was smiling. Tom wasn't listening to the story that father was telling. And uh, I give you this, uh, uh, these examples so that you can see that in the principal clause, when you, I saw, Tom wasn't listening, we had been informed, we have all those different tenses, right? Uh, so uh, we had been informed that uh, the deal was cancelled, right? Uh, even earlier, before something happened, we uh, had this knowledge, we had been informed that at the moment when we are informed, the deal is cancelled, and it was cancelled simultaneously. And the last example here, Charles would not agree in the future, in the past, that the war was lost. At the moment when he had this argument and he would agree or disagree, the war was or was not lost in his opinion, right? So uh, when the action, the two actions are simultaneous, we use the past indefinite or the past continuous in the subordinate clause. Then uh, the second idea, the second situation, is that we have uh, uh, the second, uh, the action in the subordinate clause precedes the action in the principal clause. So something happened even earlier, right? And of course we use log we logically use the past perfect and the past perfect continuous here. For instance, in the first example, the police learned where the criminals had been, right? And um, the criminals uh, had been and what ha they had been doing that night, the night before they learned it. So uh, when the police learns something, uh, they learned about something which happened even deeper in the past. And then we use the past perfect and the past perfect continues. Or another example, the lady on the phone was asking if her letter had been delivered. So her letter was delivered two days earlier, and when she called 
the uh, office, uh, she asked about some situation in the deep past, so it's uh, the action that preceded, the action of del being delivered preceded the action of asking, right? And that's why we use the past perfect for it. Uh, Maria explained that uh, Jacob um, had already told them about the ghost he had seen. Here we have uh, two levels of sequence of tenses. Maria explained something that happened earlier that Jacob had told, right? And then Jacob had told us about something which happened even deeper in the past uh, about the ghost he had seen. So, for example, he saw the ghost 20 years ago, he told us about this three days ago, and Marie explained uh, that uh, one day ago. So we have this deeper and deeper past going to at every level of the sentence. And the last example here, Louise realized she would regret the things she had done. So um, again, two levels of correlation, right? So Louise realized she would regret uh, the action of regretting follows the action of realizing, right? So in the future, in her future, she would regret it. But what would she regret? She would regret regret the things that she had done before. So then uh, the, to, to express the action which happened deeper in the past, we use the past perfect and the past perfect continues. And then the third kind of situation is uh, that after uh, the action in the past or future in the past in the principal clause, we are going to have a subordinate clause which follows it. So it, uh, something is going to happen, uh, will happen later, but we look at it from the past, right? So the example here, the children did not know, for example, the children were 10 at that moment, so the children did not know what would happen to them one year later. So they did not know t when they were 10 years old what would happen to them that when they were 11 years old. And uh, this is uh, the action, the action of happening follows the action of knowing, right? And that's why we use future in the past. Or the second example here is Officer Thompson asked what would happen next, in my opinion. So uh, Officer uh, Thompson asked, for example, 10 days ago, what would happen next, uh, nine days ago. So the action of happening again follows the action of asking. The witch predicted the queen would be getting more and more powerful until she died. By the way, here we have the natural course of events. That's why we have will be getting. Of course she will be getting. Naturally she will be getting more and more powerful. But uh, then we put it into the deeper past, right? And uh, from the point of view of the witch, it's the future. But for us, it's not the future. So the witch predicted that the queen would be getting. So the action that follows is expressed with a future in the past uh, form. And the last uh, example here is that Matthew apologized for the time his story was going to take. This example is here so that you see that it's not only future in the past action, that uh, future in the past tense that can express an action in the future viewed from the past, but also we, ha all, we have all those extra means to be going to, to be to, modal verbs, and so on. They all are still working, right? But they substitute the uh, correct grammatical forms. There is something extra, something more creative, maybe. So this table is about past stories. When you want to tell a story about your uncle uh, finding a cat in the street, you are going to choose the tenses relatively. That's why it, se it is a sequence, right? So you say, my uncle found a kitten which had blue eyes. So it's a simultaneous action. The kitten uh, had blue eyes at the same time when the uncle found them. My uncle found the kitten, which had blue eyes, and uh, had been hiding under his car. So obviously when the uncle found the kitten at that moment, which the kitten was not already hiding because he was in the hands of my uncle, but before that, earlier, deeper, precedingly, uh, the kitten had been uh, hiding under the car. So the, uh, my uncle decided the kitten would make a good companion in the future of my uncle. So the action that follows the action of decision, he decided at that moment that the kitten would make in the future a good companion for him. 
So every time you tell a past story, you look at this table and you use these tenses. Now let's uh, move on to the second table, and uh, this is the, the, the case when uh, the action in the principal clause is uh, used in one of the present forms, in uh, the present indefinite, or the present continuous, or the present perfect, or the present perfect continuous. The four present tenses are in the second column, you can see them. So here we are going to have a present time context, some sort of conversation, some sort of a story which is still fresh and we find it very important. It can be a film or a radio conversation or an interview, any sort of present time context, right? And here again, when I say I am here now, this is the moment, my moment of speaking, I'm also going to have three choices what I can use around this first countdown action. I can say that I know what is going on in the world at the moment, at the same moment it's a simultaneous action. I can say I know what happened or what has happened recently. It's the action that precedes my real moment of knowing. Or I can speak about the future and then I will say that I know what will happen 10 days later, right? So then this is, this is the action that will follow my action of knowing right at the moment. So um, with the present tenses, um, this uh, table uh, looks very stupid to many people because of course you use these tenses, right? So first of all, if the actions are simultaneous, if the action in the principal clause and the action in the uh, a subordinate clause happen at the same time, you have only two tenses to choose from. You can choose from the present indefinite or the present continuous. And uh, my favorite example is, <laughs> well, it would be much funny if we were in class, I guess, but I understand that you are confused while you're watching this video. I now understand that you are confused at the same moment, right? And I use the present indefinite plus the present indefinite. Then uh, we know what you are thinking about right now. So right at this very moment in the present continuous, we know about the simultaneous action to the, f the act of our knowing, right? We know this now and you are thinking about it right now. Or if we take uh, the principal clause in the present perfect, uh, for instance, Jessica has always thought. Jessica всегда думала and still thinks so. Uh, you are a clever person. So, you see, this is less obvious. So, uh, Jessica всегда думала, что ты умный человек. We don't have the verb in Russian at all. When we choose it in English, we're going to choose the present tense. Because at night now, Jessica still thinks about that too. She uh, <laughs> has, had, has had this belief for years. And uh, her belief is that you are a clever person, so it's a simultaneous action. And one of my favorite examples is from a book uh, where um, the government decides to flood the fields to make uh, an electric power station, uh, a river power station. And uh, the sentence from that book is, for centuries the farmers have been working on this land, this is our principal clause, and the subordinate clause, which land, the land you are planning to flood. So simultaneously, now you are planning to flood the land they have been working and they are still working because it's still not flooded, right? So uh, the simultaneous action is expressed by the present continuous and the, pre the present indefinite and the present continuous. Then uh, a preceding action, something that happened earlier. You are in a conversation and in the middle of the conversation you refer to the some past event. You have four choices here. You have the present perfect, the present perfect continuous, obviously, something which is still important or still goes on. Uh, then uh, you have the past indefinite and uh, the past continuous, but mind you, you don't have the past perfect or the past perfect continuous. Because when we are in the middle of a present time conversation, it's very rarely that we need to refer to something past and then something deeper in the past. It will only happen if our present time context will die and we're going to move on to a past story, to a long narration, to a long story of so, how something happened 10 years ago and there was something even before that. So, uh, in this case we say that uh, the present time context changed, right? 
So if the principal clause has something in the present and then you need to talk about something which happened earlier, which preceded that action, you have this a lot of choices, right? So, uh, for instance, do you know that uh, Taylor and Kim have divorced? Do you know now that they have divorced a little bit early and it's still important? I'm trying to learn what has been going on while I was away. So I'm trying to learn at the moment, before that something has been going on, and uh, during that period of time I was away. So I'm trying to learn while I was away, I was away also precedes the principal clause, right? The action in the principal clause. Then the third example, listen, this is what really happened that morning. You give an indication of time, you can't use the present perfect, you use the past indefinite. And uh, the professor is said that the students were missing classes systematically, right, as a period of time in the past. So uh, the professor is said now that there was this period of time earlier when the students were missing classes. So very easy and nice, clear picture, right? Then uh, following action, the third uh, line in the column is uh, as logical, so logical that it, it gives me a smile, right? It makes me smile a lot. So you see what follows the present, what happens after the present, and then the logical answer is of course the future, right? It is the future that happens after the present. And uh, then uh, in these examples about grandma, I think this tree will need more water. Marge is trying to calm Tom down and tell him he will be recovering soon. The lawyer has promised my boss uh, will have signed the papers by the morning. A uh, sequence of tenses just works as a very logical idea that the present is followed by the future, which makes no problem for us, I guess. We understand that. The third case uh, is, uh, again, rarest. So uh, when the action in the principal clause is in one of the future tenses, we don't like talking in the future for some reason, unless this is a lecture about the future, and then you're going to have a lot of examples there. But normally in our daily life, we like to speak in, in the present, about the present, and the future is a little bit introduced into that. But supposedly we are going to have a long story about how future will work, right? And uh, then uh, in that uh, future context we are going to say uh, that uh, something will happen and something else will happen at the same time. And the funniest thing is that the second uh, action in the subordinate clause will not be in the future, it will be in the present. And uh, this uh, looks ridiculous from the first look, but uh, think about the example. For instance, um, in September we will meet again, right? And it, uh, in September I will tell you that I am glad to see you. So you see, it, during the moment when there will be this day when we meet and I tell you this phrase, I am glad to meet you at that future moment. So if the action is simultaneous to the future, we use a present tense to explain the simultaneousness, right? Or imagine that we are going to travel together. We're going to go to New York and then in New York, uh, so now we're making plans about that. And I will, I'm telling, I'm saying that, uh, for instance, I say, um, I will show you the Statue of Liberty that stands on an island, right? So I will show the Statue of Liberty which stands at the same time, when at the moment when I'm going to be showing you the Statue of Liberty, it will be standing there, right? But together you don't need to use the second future tense, you can use the present indefinite because the statue is standing at the moment when I show it to you, right? So uh, the examples here will be if Mary calls the butler, if Mary calls the butler will tell her that I cannot answer the phone. So the butler will tell you that I cannot answer the phone. Right now the butler is not telling Mary anything. Mary didn't call yet, right? It's all in the future. The whole situation is the future situation. But at the moment when Mary will call, at that moment I cannot answer the phone. So the simultaneous action is expressed by. Uh, the, the present indefinite or the present continuous. So uh, the second case is uh, when you talk in the future, but uh, then you talk about something which will be, uh, w which will happen earlier, before the future. 
and uh, you're going to use the present perfect and the past indefinite as the most simplistic tenses. You're not going to use the past perfect continuous, that's going to be too much, right? So, for instance, I will apologize for the umbrella I have taken by mistake. So the action of having taken the umbrella happened a little earlier before you will apologize. And at this moment right now, you didn't even take anybody's umbrella, right? It's still not, hap it's still not happening. It's all a theoretical construction in the future. The second example, uh, and now you will be telling me you have never been in love, right? So you will be telling me in the future about something which has been happening earlier. Margaret will be forever sorry that she crossed my path. So at this point, Margaret didn't cross my path, right? It's in the future, but when she will be sorry, the action of crossing the path will happen earlier before that. So I'm going to use the past indefinite for that. And uh, then uh, the last case here is that uh, the action that follows a future action is another future action, another very logical connection, right? Uh, so, for instance, мы вам расскажем о том, что произойдет дальше. In Russian, it's going to be the same future tense in both the cases. And in English, finally, there is this case where the Russian coincides with the English language, right? We will inform you about what will happen next. Or the architect will agree that the renovation will cost a fortune. We didn't pay yet and we didn't talk to, to the uh, architect. The article will say that to us and we will pay even later. Or tomorrow, George will buy the medicine that he will have to take for the rest of his life. So, he will do this tomorrow, and then next period of time, even later, is going to be in the future, right? So, this is it, and uh, let me come back to you. So, you see, uh, these tables, uh, they may look very confusing, and you might uh, think that you will have to learn all the tables, but there are, you have two alternatives, like, you know, uh, the blue pill and the red pill. So, you may choose, if you have a very logical mind, you may choose to just remember all the meanings of the tenses, and every time you make a logical story, you logically choose which tense is going to express something er earlier, something later, or something at the same time. Knowing all the meanings of the tenses is enough. It's just that you need to remember this very logical idea that after the past you can't have the future or the present. It's not possible in English. The past is in the past, right? Uh, or, alternatively, if you want... To, uh, some people like to learn rules, you know. So, alternatively, you can learn these tables. And every time you have a conflict, you have a problem, you can remember the piece from the table and say, aha, uh -huh, the principal clause has an action in the future. The subordinate clause has an action which preceded that future. So, I can choose either present perfect or the past indefinite. And it may be easier for some people. For some people, it's not. So now I want you to watch this video again, maybe pause at the tables, copy down the examples. This time I'm not going to write the list of typical examples, because we don't actually need typical examples, you just need to make your own. And if you can't, you may take mine. You're welcome. So see you in class, and don't you worry, everything's going to be all right, and sequence of tenses is not going to kill you. In fact, this is the favorite uh, card at the examination in grammar because it gives you something to tell about and it gives you the chance to show that your excellent knowledge of grammar is as excellent as you can prove. So, goodbye! See you!